your body's bone marrow might actually be making fuel for cancer cells. A new study just published in Nature suggests that in some leukemia patients, this could be happening with taurine as the fuel. This is the same taurine that's in your energy drinks, the same taurine some people take as supplements. And now researchers are finding it might play a role in how quickly leukemia can grow. This research is just brand new this year, 2025, and needs more confirmation. But what they're discovering might change how we think about this common compound and who should or shouldn't be taking it. But before we dive in, I want to emphasize, I'm not sharing this to cause panic or to tell you what to do or what not to do. I believe in keeping you informed about the latest research so you can make your own decisions. So let's explore what this study actually found. If you saw one of my earlier videos called Taurine's Dark Side, Energy Booster, or Hidden Risk, then you know already I've talked about another study within the past year that was suggesting that taurine might potentially affect tumor growth in lung cancer models by influencing certain genes. That research was early stage, and so is this new study. But this study is fascinating because it comes at taurine from a completely different angle. Instead of just looking at taurine we consume, it also examines how taurine produced inside our bodies might interact with cancer cells. The researchers here were investigating aggressive forms of leukemia, and they observed something unexpected in the bone marrow environment. They found evidence suggesting that certain cells in the bone marrow, specifically cells related to bone formation, might increase their production of taurine when leukemia is present. According to their experiments, leukemia cells appear to take up this taurine and potentially use it to support their growth. When the researchers found ways to block either the production of taurine or the cancer cell's ability to use it, they observed that the leukemia didn't grow as quickly in their mouse models. The mice with blocked taurine pathways lived longer than those without this intervention in their experiments. So let me try to explain the mechanism researchers say is responsible for this. They explain that there are cells in your bone marrow called osteolineage cells that are involved in bone formation. The researchers found these cells contain an enzyme called CDO1 that produces taurine. When leukemia develops, their data showed an increase in taurine production from these cells. The cancer cells then appear to take up this taurine using a transport protein called TAUT, or T-A-U-T, also known as SLC6A6. Once inside the cancer cells, the researchers suggest taurine might affect something called the mTOR pathway. That's a signaling pathway involved in regulating cell metabolism and growth. Their experiments indicated that taurine might affect certain proteins called RAG GTPASES, RAG GPT passes, which then turn on mTOR. When mTOR is activated, it increases glycolysis, the process cells use to convert glucose into energy. The hypothesis is that this could provide cancer cells with more energy, potentially helping them grow more rapidly. Now, let's talk about whether this is something that just happens in lab mice, or could it be relevant in humans? Because the researchers did look at some of the data from human leukemia patients and reported that those with higher levels of TOT, the transporter that brings taurine into the cells, seem to have worse outcomes in their database. They also examined samples from a small number of patients with leukemia and suggested that the taurine levels in their bone marrow were higher compared to the samples from healthy individuals. One potentially interesting finding was that when they blocked taurine uptake in their lab experiments, leukemia cells appeared to become more sensitive to the cancer drug called venetoclax. This might be worth further investigation since treatment resistance is a challenge in managing leukemia. But I do want to emphasize that this is early stage research. We need larger studies with more patients and independent confirmation from other research groups before drawing strong conclusions about what this means for human leukemia treatment. Now for the part many of you are probably most curious about, the implications for taurine supplements or energy drinks with taurine. I'm happy to say that the researchers did include this question in their study. They gave some mice additional taurine in their drinking water, similar to what might happen if a person consumed taurine supplements. In their mouse models, they observed that these mice developed more aggressive leukemia that progressed faster compared to mice that didn't receive extra taurine. And I want to be very clear here. This single study doesn't show that taurine supplements cause leukemia. That's not what this research suggests at all. These were mice that already had leukemia or were predisposed to developing it. What the study raises are questions about whether additional taurine might 
potentially influence existing cancer progression in some situations. But we need much more research, including human studies, before making definitive statements about the health and safety of taurine supplements. What's interesting is how this new study relates to the previous research I talked about in my earlier video. Remember that other early stage studies suggested taurine might affect lung cancer cells by suppressing a gene called AZGP1. In this new study, the researchers proposed taurine might affect leukemia through the mTOR pathways. While these are different mechanisms, both studies raise questions about whether taurine might have some role in cellular energy regulation that cancer cells could potentially exploit in certain situations. This connects to an area of cancer research that's looking at how cancer cells obtain and use energy and grow. Cancer cells often show altered metabolism compared to normal cells, and compounds that affect metabolism might influence cancer behavior. But we're still in the early stages of this understanding of these complex mechanisms and relations between cells. And I want to be clear about something. I'm not making this video to scare anyone or to tell you to throw away your taurine supplements. My goal is simply to keep you informed about emerging research so you can make your own decisions based on a full picture. We all know there are many studies showing potential benefits of taurine, from supporting heart health and exercise performance to potential neuroprotective effects. This single study of leukemia doesn't erase those findings, not at all. Science is consistently evolving. Sometimes new studies challenge what we thought we knew or add nuance to the picture. That's how we make progress in understanding complex topics like nutrition and health. Some of you might be thinking, but I've been taking taurine for years with no issues, and that's perfectly valid. This research doesn't suggest that taurine supplements cause cancer. It's exploring a potential relationship between taurine and existing cancer progression in specific contexts. Others might be wondering, should I stop taking my pre-workout because it has taurine in it? There's no one-size-fits-all answer for this. If you're a healthy individual with no cancer history, this single study likely doesn't outweigh the established benefits of taurine for you. But if you have cancer or strong risk factors, it might be worth discussing with your healthcare provider. And those asking, why are you only focusing on the negative? That's a fair question. I cover positive findings about supplements as well if you watch my past videos. But I believe people deserve to know about potential concerns as well as benefits. That's what informed choice is all about. So, based on their findings, the researchers suggested several possible directions this research could take us in the future. They mentioned the possibility of developing inhibitors for a CD01 enzyme that produces taurine in bone marrow cells. They discussed potentially creating compounds that block the TAUT or TAUT transporter that cancer cells appear to use to take up taurine. And they suggested exploring combining these potential taurine pathway blockers with existing cancer medications to possibly help those suffering from certain cancers. In some of their mouse experiments, they used genetic modifications to block the taurine transporter. And these mice showed resistance to developing leukemia in their models. This suggests to the researchers that targeting these pathways might be worth investigating as a potential treatment and an approach. I should emphasize that moving from laboratory findings to actual treatments is a long process that often takes many years. And many promising results in early research don't end up translating to effective treatments, unfortunately. So while this research opens up some interesting possibilities, we're still very much in the early exploratory phases. Now, let me share some reasonable takeaways from this single study. If you or someone you know has leukemia, this research might be worth mentioning to their doctor. Not as something to take action on immediately, but as an emerging area of research they might want to keep an eye on. Medical professionals are in the best position to evaluate how new research might relate to specific patient situations. If you currently take taurine supplements or regularly consume products with added taurine, there's not enough evidence here to say you should definitely stop. But you might want to consider the potential questions this research raises and weigh them against your reasons for taking taurine. As with any supplement, it's always good to periodically reassess whether it's still appropriate for you and worth taking. It's also worth remembering that this study focused on specifically leukemia in their laboratory conditions. We don't know yet whether these similar mechanisms might be at play in other types of cancers or in more complex real-world settings. 
scientific understanding evolves gradually through multiple studies and uh, replications. So it's best to view this as one piece of an emerging puzzle rather than a definite answer. Now, my take on this is that it's interesting to watch science in action, seeing how researchers investigate compounds like taurine from different angles and how our understanding gradually develops as new studies emerge. Cancer research is incredibly complex. Cancer adapts and finds ways to use various biological pathways to support its growth. Each study like this one gives us potential new insights, but it's important to see them as pieces of a much larger puzzle. And like mentioned already, most of this research is still at the mouse study stage. We need more research, particularly in humans, before drawing firm conclusions about taurine's role in cancer. This single study raises interesting questions, but it's just the beginning of what could be an important area of cancer research to help those that are suffering. I hope you found this helpful. If you have thoughts or questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. And if you didn't catch the previous video, Taurine's Dark Side, Energy Booster, or Hidden Risk, check it out here. This is Dave. Thanks for watching. Stay strong, stay healthy, be informed, and not influenced. I'll catch you next time.